back to it. Uh, this is the top frame now. Uh, showed you the bottom frame, showed you the plate on the bottom frame, showed you the wheels on the bottom frame. And so now this is the top frame. This is what the actual welding machines are going to sit on. Uh, if you look at it, basically it's 40 inches long, 36 from here to there. 36 is actually going to be the dimension of the top. And uh, so we're going to only play, it's cut, plate will cover from that end to right here. This, this will be our handle for pushing the cart around. So let's set this thing on the, on what we've got of the cart here. Move you right over here out of the way. Should be quite a ride. And then I'll set that up there and kind of show you what we're talking about. So there's the there's the cart base with the cabinets on it. So this is a wonder. Should sit right about there. Or we're pretty close to it. So this end will now, this will become where our bottles are. Uh, this top, which will be 36 inches by 24 covered, will be for welding machines. And then this will be the car, the handle to push the cart with. Uh, there's storage back here. And this is where our tubes are gonna go, I hope. Let me grab one. So my hope is that the tubes will go through the top plate. Boom right about there and we'll probably have one two three four five so basically behind the MIG and behind the plasma cutter and the TIG which is quite a bit deeper takes up the full depth so I think that'll work out so these will be back there um, the next thing we're going to do is there's a series of J-hooks that I showed you before and we're going to put our J-hooks on and then once the J-hooks are on we're going to go ahead and and put the uh, uh, plate steel on the or plate aluminum on top. The J hooks are going to sit right along here, three of them distributed, and this will just give us some cord line uh, for various cords. So we'll distribute them evenly across that bar, and then again, this is going to mount. Uh, there's also a post that goes from here to here, and it'll mount. This will all be in line. Anyway, let's put it that way. Um, let me show you the down posts. You have a little bit of an issue there. Um, so when I cut the down posts, or whatever you want to call these things, um, well, I just did it wrong. I didn't mismeasure, but I cut it to the exact measurement of the top of the cabinet, and that simply isn't going to work. So we're going to have to actually shim this up with a small, small square of the eighth inch plate. And then that should leave us just enough space to be able to move that cabinet in and out. So when we put those posts in, we're going to take one in and put a square tab of the eighth inch aluminum plate, basically as an extender. Um, these things were 24 and 5 eighths inches tall. Without the wheels, these things came with the wheels. I didn't put them on it. Um, so 24 and 5 eighths inches. I meant to cut it 24 and 3 quarters, 24 and 7 eighths, something like that. And I guess 24 and 5 eighths just got stuck in my head after I measured the cabinet to start with. Then I promptly put them on it or cut them at 24 and 5 eighths. So it's basically exact dimension, as exact as I could get it. And that's not going to work out. So we'll shim those up, give us an eighth inch. Probably not quite an eighth inch clearance because everything's just a little uneven here and there. But hopefully enough, I think it'll be enough to get our our uh, cabinets uh, in and out of the cart and all I need to do really is get them in there once get them in there once screw them in place and we're good to go so looking up I'm gonna put the J hooks on the top frame now and uh, then we're gonna put the plate steel on I apologize I have not gotten any arc shots yet I need to get my photographer here um, we don't have fancy equipment uh, photography equipment so she basically will just have to hold a welding lens over the front of the camera. So next time she's here and I'm welding, I'll definitely get some arc shots. Um, you really didn't want to see the arc shots early on. Not sure you really want to see them that much now, um, but they're certainly getting better uh, in time. Here, let me see if I can show you one or two. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm tipping you all over the place except where I want you to be.
take my glove off here. All right, you can kind of see they're not too bad in places. Uh, here's one here, not too bad. You know, they're not all as one is not all one's not as good as all the others. That's for sure, but that's to be expected when you're doing this for the first time. So, and like I said, I ground these off just because we're putting plate on here, and I ground off the ground off the bottom side for putting those risers on. But yeah, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I won't say I'm ridiculously proud, but. I'm not ashamed either. So we'll take that for first thing out with aluminum welding. Oh, look at you pointing to the ceiling. There you go. Um, we're going to get on with it and try to get this top piece done, get the J hooks on, gets plate on. And then we can start building the uh, vertical structure to put this thing, truly glue this thing together. We'll get back to you. All right, so the top's pretty well done. Um, except it's not connected to the bottom obviously a um, couple things I was going to show you this I think is ultimately how I'm going to finish it originally I was going to paint it um, I think it's just going to scratch too badly if I paint it so I'm just going to give it a brush finish uh, with a brush and uh, call it good let me show you this uh, end down here just a second so here's the push into the cart push handle here and we got three hooks uh, one of them will run up the extension cord the other two will be used for the uh, mig leads and then this is the back of the cart uh, what I'm defining as the back the back of the welding machine will be here and so that's where all our electrical will mount up I'm gonna and then also, this is where our, our uh, TIG rod storage tubes will pass through the top, starting here, five across, to uh, about here. So that's that situation. Let me show you the electrical solution and how that's going to work out. All right, so here's the electrical. Um, these three boxes... And these are going to mount up under the back, up under here, where you won't be able to readily see them. And uh, there's two 22240 circuits and one 110 circuit. Um, this is for the, the plasma cutter. It's a 110 plasma cutter. Um, could be later converted to 220 if need be. Um, who replaced the plasma cutter and then here's our electrical cord There's a 10 gauge 8 gauge SO cord basically 50 feet long and it's gonna coil up here on this on this J hook and so anyway this will mount in the back underneath about midways uh, mount up to the bottom of the of the aluminum frame there and so that's the electrical solution so um, next things next we've got to we're going to put these risers that go between the top and the bottom there's seven in all that'll be the four corners of the top there'll be one in the middle here one in the middle back there um, and then there'll be one in the uh, vertically in the middle on the end down here uh, that one's going to be there because that's the area where we're going to weld on our gas bottle mount system so we just want a little bit of extra back there to help uh, stabilize the, uh, the gas cylinders so yeah it's looking up we'll keep moving forward uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get started on putting the risers on we've got to cut some uh, eighth inch plate tabs I talked about that earlier where I undercut those uh, risers slightly so uh, you won't know the difference once we're done but right now just a bit too short and I mean just a bit but uh, we'll get that up a little bit and then uh, we'll be able to pull those in and out uh, for a final prep on it and we'll also uh, once they're in there to stay we're going to use 
sheet metal screws from the inside into various locations and just to hold them in place they'll be easy to take out if we need to by removing those sheet metal screws they don't need much to be to hold them in there uh, just need to be in there so we're moving on and uh, happy so far can't say my welding's great but it's not a train wreck let me show you I guess I'll show you this well down here I've been kind of sanding things smooth in a lot of places but I didn't sand here so I'll kind of show you how it, this one turned out here in just a second so if I was taking an aluminum welding class I certainly wouldn't get an A but I don't think I'd fail either uh, you can see this weld and this one's harder to see but around this side there's also one here that uh, starts about here goes down so I mean they're good enough um, and they're getting better I think that's I guess what makes me happiest uh, even when they're not great they're getting a little better as we go so uh, have my occasional ones that's just hideous but fewer of those and more of these that would uh, would pass muster and so happy with it now we just uh, keep moving forward and weld in these these down legs here and start getting this thing properly glued together so talk to you in a little bit Bye. well next step on the cart the welding cart took the top welded to the bottom using our 24 and 3 quarter inch risers uh, the ones we mentioned I mentioned earlier in the earlier segment there 24 and 5 eighths after I cut them but I miscut them so I put a piece of plate uh, on the end to make them extend them by an eighth of an inch so they're 24 and 3 quarters now I think our our storage is going to slide up in there okay now um, really struggling sometimes with this aluminum one time uh, he lays really really well next time it doesn't and understanding the difference can be a real challenge sometimes um, but I can give up so we we'll keep moving forward uh, all the posts are welded to the base posts are about half welded to the top so I'm going to flip it upside down and finish the weld out on these and then after we finish that weld out while well, I still have it up on the saw horses we're going to go ahead and weld in our bottle rack, uh, two pieces, one high and one low. So let's go ahead and I'm going to flip it over, get the, uh, get the legs welded fully to the top, and keep moving forward. I think in the last segment we showed the uh, installation of the, uh, that we were installing the uh, bottle rack uh, portion and uh, those have been welded on uh, the went ahead and stuck the two cabinets in uh, into place they're not screwed in I think I'm just gonna leave them floating they're snug in there they're not going anywhere by any means and so I think we'll leave those as is um, the went ahead and stuck the machines on there there's the TIG there's the Hobart Air Force 250CI plasma cutter and then the MIG machine here on the end. Uh, the MIG machine on the end is on the end so that we can access the, the panel for uh, getting to the wiring, to the wire, excuse me. And so you can see we've got free and clear motion there. And uh, so that's, that's good. Um, the supports here uh, are the hooks here on the end for the wiring uh, they're functioning for us well we've got the, the MIG torch and the MIG uh, ground cable there and then this is our electrical cord so we'll let that bike roll by um, the electrical system I showed you basically previously but it's now been uh, installed onto the uh, base of the uh, on the underside of the bar, uh, top portion of the cart and we've got a 240 volt here uh, for our uh, TIG 
a 110 for our plasma cutter and another 240 here for the MIG machine. So we've got the one cord that comes off, in our case it hooks to the dryer plug. Um, and so the electrical system is in place and good to go. Um, let me show you the bottle support system. Um, I showed you the pieces we were going to weld on. You can't really see the top one very well. Maybe the bottom one you can. Uh, but you see I've got the, I actually got the cap from the bottle resting on it. Now this is the point where our, our uh, chains come initiate. Let me move this and I can show you better. So our chains initiate here on the center portion and they wrap around each bottle. And one thing I am lacking and need to get is a, uh, is a clamp or I'm going to use a bolt. Uh, for this uh, secure the chain right now I've got them secured with some vice grips not the best security you can get for a bottle but uh, it's holding it on for the moment so we're gonna get a bolt basically a two inch bolt that'll come through here have a nut on the uh, it'll be nutted to the frame here and then we'll put the hook over it or the chain over it and we'll put a like a fender washer and a nut on top of that just to hold the chain in place be easy to take off whenever we need to change out the gas cylinders. Um, the gas cylinder uh, cord solution is in place, uh, one on each. In this case, these are extra, extra welding hoods. Uh, our primary hoods hanging right up here on top, of the, on top of the larger cylinder, the argon cylinder. And then our TIG torch, TIG ground cable, our foot switch and our thumb switch are uh, mounted up here on the uh, or wrapped up up there on those uh, J hooks so I think for this end of the cart the uh, the gas uh, the, the hooks that hang over the gas bottles is more than adequate for what we need and so we're happy with that anyway you can get to your uh, regulators and your valves fairly easily here's the regulator for the MIG here's the regulator for the TIG so we're happy with that um, the machines all fit on there all fit on there well three remaining things outstanding uh, the I've got machine covers that I'm making for the three machines just to keep the dust and debris down these things have a lot of electronics in them and so I just want to keep the insides as clean as possible I actually took the Hobart and the uh, uh, Chicago electric MIG machine apart and blew them out with an air compressor uh, just to keep uh, airborne dust from grinding on my old truck and things like that keep that stuff from collecting on the circuit boards and potentially shorting them out uh, the Hobart actually just had to go in for a warranty repair on the motherboard I had to have a new motherboard put in luckily it was still under warranty so uh, that was repaired for free it's a great plasma cutter. I love that plasma cutter as far as performance goes for its size, 110 volt, no external air required. Uh, cut up to 3 16 pretty easily. Um, well, it'll, that's not true. It'll sever quarter. I think it does a little better than severing. Uh, so anything below that, it does pretty decent on, but it is very slow. Uh, you will not make fast cuts with that machine. And so anyway, uh, moving on to the next thing, three things remaining. We need to put in the TIG, uh, uh, TIG wire uh, storage. We need to finish up these bolts here uh, that are going to terminate our chains. And then we need to put our machine covers, build our machine covers and put them on. So uh, we'll show you those as we go. Let me show you the TIG storage is going to be right back here. Well, you can actually see I set a... Uh, a set of hole saw there so there'll be five holes that come along here uh, they've got to clear the back of our electrical boxes that are down here and so there'll be five holes with tubes that stick into them they'll be behind the MIG and the uh, and the plasma cutter should be able to reach over pretty easily unscrew the caps take out what you need screw the caps back on um, so we'll still get that done anyway on to the next thing Let's see about these. Let's see about these machine covers and get them going.